Welcome, beautiful friends. This is the Organizer Advisor here to help you enhance your happiness and transform your life. Welcome to all of my new subscribers. A special thanks to all of my subscribers and followers who have been on this journey with me for the long term. And if you're new here, welcome. I hope you find something valuable. Grab your hydration beverages and let's just have our moment together. My goal is to help you enhance your physical well-being, your emotional well-being, your environment, your financial well-being, and your relationships. This is what makes us happier. It uplifts us as human beings. We have better connections, better relationships. We enjoy the process of living more, and this ultimately helps all of humanity. As you are happier in your presence, if you are happier in your being, if you are happier in your surroundings, you radiate. And that warmth, that light, that joy is infectious and it spreads. So my goal is to collectively help everybody get to a point where we're all doing our part to spread warmth, love, and joy through our own happiness. So for this video, I want to talk about our March month of self-care. So we are really focusing on enhancing our physical well-being. And so we've taken a few steps and we're employing for this month, pick three. You can pick more if you want, but the basic requirement for daily self-care health care is pick three. Three things you can do every day and you can rotate them it's not the same things every day to enhance your health and well-being so i want to go through just like a summary and then i would like to ask you a few questions okay so what do you do to enhance your health every day we have a plethora of resources in our surroundings that we can utilize. It doesn't have to be expensive, but I'm just about going to guarantee that you have equipment, devices, items, um, all kinds of resources for you to be able to tap into, even in little small ways, that are going to help you enhance your health and happiness. So we took this inventory of, we just went through and got all of our exercise equipment, anything that we could utilize that we already have. So I, of course, not asking you to go out and spend a bunch of money, and I might even save you some money by maybe not feeling so um, determined to get a gym membership. Gym memberships are great if you use them, but they can be very pricey. So some of these activities that you have, you've already spent the money on, let's utilize them. And then if you need to join a gym as a supplement, that's great, but at least you're incorporating all the things you've already purchased. You've, you've invested money in these items for your well-being. And if they're not being utilized, you're not able to capitalize on that resource and you're definitely not getting your money's worth. And I'm all about getting your money's worth. What you have should be working for you in some way. It should be working for you. All right, so we did this inventory. I'm just gonna run through some of the things that I wrote down on my inventory because I even forgot a couple and as I was going through my routines, I was like, oh, I have this. 
So I have two bicycles. I have a bike that I do for speed, and then I have a bike I do for cruising. I have a blind Frenchie, so she can't go for a walk, but she can get in her little Frenchie trailer and go for a bike ride. Um, I have two treadmills. I have a big one that inclines, so I can use that for incline work to up my heart rate and get a more cardiovascular workout, but just a walking pad if I just want to do some moderate walking. It's convenient because it's, I can move it. It's very mobile. I can move it while I'm working. I have a, this little table that my computer is on. It's like a little bed table, and I can actually have that, and I can be working while I'm walking. It's also a, something that you could do at work under your desk, but I can move it around so if I want to look outside, I can look outside or I can watch TV. So very mobile, relatively inexpensive, goes about four miles an hour, and it's great for just a moderate walk. All right, I have hand weights, a hula hoop. I have some yoga items, so I have my yoga basket. Um, I have a kayak, so that's a great exercise. You may have a paddle board or a surfboard. Um, I have arm and leg weights. I like to use those when I'm cleaning because I get that little extra um, weight when I'm dusting or cleaning the glass surfaces. I'm using those arm weights, so it's really starting to tone those muscles. Um, archery equipment, croquet. I love croquet. Horseback riding. I have a horse. Saddle. I like to go horseback riding. I have golf clubs. I have resistance bands. I have um, a couple of CD DVDs that I can play. One of them P90X that kills me, but it's such a good workout. I also have, which I had forgotten about until I was redoing my inventory, a BOSU ball. So anything that you have that you could utilize, you can write them down and do a pick, just pick one a day. It can vary. Today's a nice day. I'm going to go golfing. So adjust it to the weather, adjust it to how you feel that day, but you have a variety of things that you can utilize in order to enhance your physical well-being. All right, so now let's talk about all these things we've invested in for our personal care. So if you have um, any health monitoring devices, such as your glucose, your, your glucose monitor, your blood pressure monitor, you could have um, your scale, your smartwatch, that takes, t keeps track of your activity. I have one that tells me when I've been sitting too long to keep my circulation going. It also will monitor my oxygen intake. So this is a device that's invaluable because it's gonna monitor me throughout the day. Um, so on Sunday, as you know, I take my health assessments. So I usually fast on Saturday night. I take an electrolyte solution on Saturday to keep my electrolytes up to make it easier for me to fast. And then on Sunday, I weigh myself, I take my blood pressure, and I take my glucose. And this gives me an idea of what I need to adjust in my diet, in how busy I am. If my blood pressure's up and I'm stressed, then I need to in implement in my pick three, some more quiet stillness meditation, maybe connecting with nature, things that I know are gonna bring my blood pressure down. I definitely take my blood sugar so I can look, on my diet, um, look at my diet over the past week. You can keep a dietary journal if that helps you to track what have you been eating. Have I been hydrating enough in order to keep my blood pressure and blood sugar down? And then I'm going to look at the nutrients that I have. Now, this is going to include your vitamins and supplements if you subscribe to that practice, any kind of protein powders, um, any supplements that you take, including your medications if you need to take medications, but also let's take a serious look as food, as nutritional resources. What foods do you have in your home, in your pantry, your kitchen, your freezer, that are designed to enhance your health. You should have at least 85 to 90% of the foods that make up your pantry, refrigerator, and freezer designed to enhance your health. So you can pull them all out and look at them. 
and some of my favorite things and some of the things that I just keep on hand and I just keep a list of foods that I'm, I know I'm going to pick up every time I go grocery shopping. Remember, when you go grocery shopping, the labyrinth, the aisles are mainly processed foods. You want to spend the bulk of your time along the periphery inside the store. That's where you're going to have your fresh foods because they have to be plugged in because they're refrigerated. So all of the produce, dairy, meats, um, fish, uh, all of those are going to be along the outer walls. Whereas the labyrinth, once you get in there, you are way over your head and it's advertising, 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 and you will wear down and get those impulse items. You're gonna save money if you make a list and stick to it. Use your coupons in your store sales because we're all about financial well-being, but try to spend the majority of your time along the outer walls. All right, so a few of the, the foods that I get every single time I go to the grocery store. I get, well, I don't get eggs. My chickens give me nutritious eggs. They are free range. You can tell the difference between a caged chicken egg and a free range egg when you crack the egg and look at the yolk color. A free range egg yolk is going to be bright yellow, very vibrant, rich looking, almost a deep gold color. That's nutrition. Okay, I get salmon, I get avocado, I get kiwis, kale, blueberries. Um, I like um, green tea, I like hibiscus tea. Um, I do like to have some carbonated water, but it's just carbonated water. Um, I sometimes add a little salt to my water, so I use Himalayan sea salt. But I also get um, a variety of vegetables and I, I'm very minimal on fruit. Remember, I am pre-diabetic, so I don't eat a lot of fruit. I only eat fruit a couple of times a week. And if I'm gonna eat fruit, it's gonna be an occasional banana, but it has a lot of sugar, spikes my blood sugar, so I try to keep that down. I might throw a half a banana in a protein shake. But I also will eat occasionally um, the blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, watermelon, and uh, once in a great while, like a little tangerine. But I try to rotate my fruit so I get a really good balance of nutrients. So if I'm gonna focus on citrus fruits, um, I'm gonna focus on the berries, and then I'm gonna focus on a couple of additional fruits just to create a variety in my diet. I also like kombucha. Um, I will also eat a lot of broccoli. Those cruciferous vegetables are so healthy for you. Olive oil, avocado oil, and I mean, they're kefir. There's a, a lot of other things, but once you get in a habit of buying these foods and keeping them on hand, then you are definitely going to start to improve your eating habits, your nutrition, and that's going to radiate. It's going to take a little while as you kind of clean out some of the stuff, so you need to make sure you're drinking your water. When you eat a lot of processed food, your body doesn't necessarily recognize a lot of those ingredients that we can't pronounce, so it stores it in fat. So as you burn fat, you're going to release some of the stuff into your bloodstream to be eliminated. So make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Okay, so those are just some of the things. Of course, I eat tons of vegetables. I do also use psyllium fiber to help monitor my blood sugar. And I also, uh, once in a while, uh, do like a diatomaceous earth scrub where I take a couple of tablespoons of diatomaceous earth and some water. And I do this after I've fasted, so I have an empty stomach. And those little diatom fossils just kind of clean out the inside of my intestinal tract to keep it nice and healthy, as well as um, it has silica in it, and your body needs silica in order to rebuild. I also take collagen for collagen powder for rebuilding my skin tissue. Now remember, I am not a licensed medical practitioner, doctor. I'm a doctor of philosophy, and 
please make sure you check with your health care provider before you make any kind of changes in your diet, your exercise routine, or your vitamins and supplements because some medications can interact with vitamins and supplements. Okay, so I think we've talked about a lot of that. Now let's talk about our personal care. And we, with our inventory, our personal care appliances, apparatus that we use so that we can enhance the way we look and ultimately the way we feel. Because honestly, when we look good, we feel better. All right, so we're gonna break this down by um, the type of um, skincare or beauty routine. Remember, we have a schedule Monday, facial skincare, Tuesday, Manny Petty. Wednesday is going to be deep conditioning hair day. Thursday is our dental health day. Friday, facial day again. Saturday, out in the fun with sunshine, fresh air, and exercise. And then Sunday is the rest, relax, restore, and recover. So let's talk about some of our facial products. Um, the process that I use for my skincare, I exfoliate. I often, after I exfoliate, use a mask to pull out any impurities. And then I rinse, tone, and moisturize. At night, I like to use slugging, which is a moisture barrier over the moisturizer. I sleep with a fan, and that fan directly on my skin all the time is gonna dry it out. So slugging to me is an important process. So if you don't know what that is, there's a bunch of uh, research on um, um, slugging and there's a bunch of videos, but you could also leave a comment and I will be happy to make a video helping you understand how to slug your skin. All right, so some other things I do for my skin, dry, dry brushing. This is going to release the lymphatic system. It's gonna release any kind of, um, it's just gonna open it up. And so dry brushing, cupping. I also like to do a salt bath for skin care. This could be Epsom salts or Himalayan salts. Um, I use devices. I have an LED mask, and then uh, which is red light, but it also has green light and blue light. I use a microcurrent, and um, I do facial yoga. Try it. And then uh, cupping also open up the lymphatic system. I have gua sha stone, jade rollers, and I have a home waxing kit so I can keep my eyebrows looking good. All right, so that's kind of the skincare facial thing. What do you have in addition to that? If you have a product or a device that you absolutely love, please share below so I can research it, do a video on it, and let you know, let others know. Okay, so let's talk about Manny Petty. Now, it's really important that we keep our nails. Um, oh, one more thing. Before we leave skincare, always, 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 while you're taking care of your skin, look, just do yourself a little self-check, your dermatology self-check. Um, just look for anything that looks unusual. Communicate immediately with your doctor if you find something concerning. Okay, same thing with if you're a woman, or I'll be honest with a man, um, your breast, monthly breast exam, self-exam, um, you can, you know, with your um, significant other, give each other a reminder to do the monthly self-exam because if you can catch it early, then you have a great chance of minimizing um, any kind of impact. So um, take that as part of your self-care. Um, let's move on to Manny Petty. Um, as we do our Manny Petty, it gives us a good opportunity to look at our nail beds and if they're nice and pink and healthy looking. Mine have a little bit of ridges, so I might need to look into that. I've always had ridges, but also are your cuticles nice and healthy looking? Are the skin around your fingertips and your toenails, are they nice and healthy looking? This gives us an opportunity to not only, you know, glam our fingers and toes up a bit, but it also gives us an opportunity to check for good health indicators. Um, as far as our feet, 
and you know having nice soft feet help you sleep better it makes you more comfortable in your shoes those heel cracks could be a vitamin deficiency but they hurt and so sometimes it makes it difficult to walk look at whether or not your um, your feet have any kind of issues like nail fungus you might want to communicate with your doctor or podiatrist but bunions as well I shared a story about my mom who had bunions and whose feet absolutely um, became uh, d deformed. It made it very difficult for her to walk, which affected her whole skeletal structure. She was in a, some pain. She took aspirin every day because it all started with the feet. You have 8,000 nerves in your feet and your feet are all about your balance. So the feet and the core are where you are in alignment and it is best for your balance. So keeping your feet healthy and keeping your core strong are gonna help you as you age with balance. Okay, so, you know, mani pedis they're not only just make us look beautiful, they actually do have health implications. All right, let's talk about hair care. Deep hair conditioning, scalp massage, a good quality cut is going to uplift the way you look and feel. But it's also good for the way our hair grows. If we have a conditioned scalp, we don't have a lot of dandruff issues, which is indicating something about your health. But your hair, if it's soft and bouncy, and it feels good and it looks shiny, you're gonna feel better about yourself. You're gonna feel more beautiful, you're gonna feel uplifted, and your hair is gonna grow to be healthy and shiny and bouncy. So whatever practice you use for your hair conditioning and scalp massage and whatever treatment that you need to keep your scalp healthy, that's a really good indicator of uplifted well-being and how we feel about the way we look. All right, let's talk about dental care. We usually do this on Thursdays, but every, the beginning of every month, I change my toothbrush to make sure that it is cleaning effectively. This is gonna maximize my gum health because those bristles are gonna be strong enough and they're gonna get, get along that gum line and my gums are gonna be healthier. A frayed toothbrush, those bristles just bend, and they're too pliable, and then they don't actually clean as well. So we want to make sure that we're monitoring our toothbrush and it's, you know, it does have kind of a shelf life. So uh, I do use either a bamboo or a biodegradable plastic, just so you know. Also, you can use your flosser if you have a water pick or any other kind of um, dental cleaning device. If you use whitening trays or whitening strips, flossing is a must, and also you have um, mouthwash. You can have different types of mouthwashes for your specific needs. Now, if you have really bad breath, you may wanna look at your dental cleaning practices because usually if you have bad breath, it's because of something in your microbiome, in your gut, or you have a lot of bacteria in your mouth and you just haven't been able to clean that out effectively. So you may need like a bridge threader to clean under your bridges, or you might need to have any kind of specialty device to clean some um, dental hardware in your mouth. Like if you have braces or bridges or partials, you wanna make sure we are cleaning those so that we have nice fresh breath, which is an indicator of your well-being. Okay, so also before I leave that topic, do a little tongue exam. Look in your cheeks, look under your tongue, look on your tongue. You can brush your tongue if you want, but you wanna do a dental exam at least once a month. I like to do it when I do my breast self-exam because that's gonna give me an indication. Of course, when you go to your dentist or your dental care provider, they're going to look under your tongue and they're gonna do an exam, but that's at the most twice a year. Let's incorporate that into our monthly self exams, skin, tongue, and um, your breast exam. Okay, so let's talk about um, some practices that we can incorporate. This could be one of your pick three. Um, I am a big advocate of meditation. 
meditation brings my blood pressure down. And if I know, if I haven't meditated, my blood pressure goes up because I'm a type A personality and I absorb stress. And I am very busy most of the time. I keep myself very busy, but I also overbook myself quite a bit. I'm a person that always wants to be helping others. So I tend to get a little bit um, overwhelmed. And when I get overwhelmed, I get stressed. And when I get stressed, up goes the blood pressure, up goes the cortisol. And then it starts this little chain reaction where I stress eat and then I don't take good self-care. So when I meditate, it resets me. It brings me back down to center. It calms my body, calms my mind. And then I can reboot my day and get back into good self-care. Remember, good self-care is health care. All right. Um, what about fasting? Intermittent fasting. Um, Dr. Uh, Mindy Peltz, Dr. Eric Berg are great resources if you don't know what fasting can do for your body, it triggers autophagy, which is like house cleaning. It's your cells go through and sweep out all the, you know, little pieces and parts that aren't working anymore, flushes them out, and your mitochondria works better. Your cells have these little switches in them. So once you hit, hit fasting milestones, uh, 15 hours, 18 hours, up to 24, 36, 48, 72 hours of fasting, um, it definitely triggers your cells to do di different functions that are going to improve your health. It's anti-aging. It's going to be, um, it will help your overall health and well-being, your metabolism, and you actually feel better. So if that's something you want to explore, you can put a comment down below. I'll do an entire video on fasting. I'll accumulate the resources and I will be happy to share that with you. Um, but I would, again, Dr. Mindy Peltz, Dr. Eric Berg, going to have a plethora of resources for you to help you understand intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating, and long-term fasting. All right, um, also detoxing. When I fast, I also like to detox, and this is like I drink green tea, I drink a little salt water, so I may do a more extended fast to really help my body clean out some of the things that are no longer needed. I, I, I envision it, them just sweeping up. They just sweep up the debris that's no longer working so it can be flushed out. Um, I like to connect with nature. The research on getting out, even, you know, literally hugging a tree is good for you. Looking at the clouds is good for you. Breathing in the fresh air, looking at the trees, connecting with nature has so many positive psychological, emotional, and physical well-being implications. It is well documented in the literature, in the research. Taking a walk in nature, you could do a meditative walk, that is going to boost your brain function. It's going to give your body um, just that calm, connected sense of being. Breath work. There's lots of different breath work strategies out there. There's box breathing, there's the Wim Hof method. Um, there's just, um, you know, the big, deep cleansing breath breathing. You could do, uh, check out your local yoga studio. They may do breath work sessions to help teach you how to do breath work. There's tons of videos. Um, available that you can find on how to do breath work. Find what works for you. Maybe explore a couple of different strategies and then, you know, pursue what feels best to you. Um, sound baths. Another great thing you can do at your yoga studio or you can do in your own home. I have uh, 432 hertz music. If you don't know what self-reggio scale, the self-reggio scale is, you may want to look that up. Certain frequencies of sound can help improve our body. Um, singing bowls help improve um, the way our body functions. So, I mean, you can look all of this up. It is definitely well documented in the literature that sound waves can heal and they can influence your body. So I keep soft music on in my home all the time, and, but I also will put on my headphones and listen to different self-reggio scales, different frequencies of music, things that soothe my soul, 
but you can also do sound bath, uh, Tibetan singing bowls or the crystal singing bowls. There's tons of resources out there. You could do that while you're meditating. It will help you get into a deeper state of calm. And then earthing. One of the things I like to do is I like to go outside and walk around barefooted. I live in the country, so I can. But with those 8,000 nerve endings in your feet, when I go out and they are stimulated by the grass, by the texture, not just the plain texture of the inside of a shoe, but the different textures of the ground, uh, rocks. I like to walk on different surfaces because this stimulates and activates those nerve cells which improves my balance. Okay, um, I think that is basically all I wanted to go over today. So that gives you plenty of options for your pick three. You can pick five, you can pick seven, you can pick 10. Whatever works for you and whatever stage of process that you are in as far as enhancing your health, do what works for you. But the minimum that we're focusing on in this month of March is our pick three. So pick three, have a great day, and consciously entertain how you can enhance your psychological, your emotional, and your physical well-being each and every day. I am the organizer advisor, and my goal is to help you enhance your happiness and transform your life. And leave me a comment like this video if you've found something valuable, subscribe to my Facebook page, follow my Facebook page, subscribe to my, face, my YouTube channel, and then hit that notification bell so you know when I'm going to post new content because it's all designed to help you enhance your happiness and transform your life. I'll see you next time. Until then, bye.